everybody. Welcome to the latest episode of the Female Film, film Critics panel. This is the show where once a month I gather content creators and film critics uh, that we hear about their experience and it's so much fun. I really enjoy getting to do this. And today I have two very special guests with me today. I have Karen Peterson here. Hi. And I have Selspec, the YouTuber here. It's so exciting. Hello. Yes. And uh, I'm so grateful to both of you for coming and sharing your experiences. This is always a highlight of my month. And uh, I'd like to have a chance for both of you to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your content and how you got started uh, in uh, reviewing films and, and creating content. And uh, so Karen, why don't you start? Okay. Well, how I got started is actually a very long story, but okay. <laughs> um, but to simplify things a little bit, I used to work for a site called Award Circuit, which uh, oddly enough, all of my content now is owned by Variety. So that's kind of weird because Clayton <laughs> Davis, who founded Award Circuit now is the awards editor at Variety Magazine, which is amazing. Good for him, but kind of <laughs> sucked for me because I lost my job. So, you know. Anyway, so I, uh, yeah, now I'm freelancing a lot. I actually have done some writing for Variety too, but uh, I also have a podcast, a couple of podcasts. I co-host the Citizen Dame podcast where we talk about film and TV, basically the the industry and, and reviews and things from a very female uh, perspective. We've never had a man on our show, actually. We've had a few that wanted to be, but we have not done that yet. <laughs> um, and I also co-host the Watch and Talk podcast, where uh, we just review a movie or two every week. And, and uh, that's a lot of fun as well. So that's cool. a little bit about me. Yeah, sounds great. Uh, what about you, Selspec? How did you get started on YouTube? Um. Not anything totally dramatic. I made my first video back in 2009. Um, that was actually the first year that I did what I've done every year since, which is ranking all of the animated films of a year from worst to best. And I still do that now. Uh, but back then, it, that was a different channel that at some point got taken down because of copyright. And then I made a new one. Because... Um, Shocking, but there used to be a time where copyright was even worse, mm. <laughs> uh, depending on what, depending on how exactly you used it. Anyway, it, I didn't do it on any sort of regular basis. It didn't take. It took me so long to make one, and I not until around 2015 I started picking up making mm. uh, more videos throughout the year, doing major movie releases as they premiered. Because I initially was mostly just doing. Uh, uh, the year end list. And then occasionally I did some Cora videos. I did some My Little Pony videos. Um, and then eventually it just, the numbers just started, just the numbers just started ranking up. The algorithm was kind mm -hmm. to me one day. <laughs> and then I've been about the right area of success. I think I'm comfortable with mm -hmm. um, because I'm perfectly fine being kind of in this corner where I'm doing well, but I'm not so popular that people are trying to tear me down. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that for my most popular uh, content is at Hallmarkies podcast that I do. And uh, I, I feel the same way kind of a thing that sure, I'd like to be more successful and continue to be successful. But I'm also like, happy with this freelancing kind of space like that, uh, like a modicum of success, that enough that I can live the way that I want to live. But I'm not dealing with the horribles that often. <laughs> I think that's one of the things that is fun about doing what we do, at least to me, is that mm -hmm. success looks different for each of us. And we kind of get to define what that is ourselves. Yeah. And, and I just, I love that. That's true. That's true. And, and I, I think that it, you can get kind of jaded if you're not careful about the internet. And I think everybody has the negative experiences, but when you're at, a, uh, I don't know, when you're at a certain level, there, uh, there can be really positive experiences. And, and like I've had with this female film critics panel and getting to know people. And um, that's one thing I loved about uh, the um, movie Belle from last year was that it was all about the positive side of 
our internet interactions and how we can literally rescue each other. And I thought that was really moving and, uh, and true. I've had mostly positive experiences from uh, this whole thing and getting to interact with people I would never meet in any other way. So, uh, well, so suspects, how did you first become interested in animation? Um, it was kind of always my thing. Uh, I grew up during the nineties when Disney was doing its Renaissance and those were always my favorite films. And that was predominantly the only films that I saw, even when we get into the two thousands and the two thousands was when Pixar took off. So those were always the movies that I just liked the most. And I watched live action stuff occasionally, but in strikingly lower numbers, that was just always what I was drawn to. So mm -hmm. that's what I decided to, that's just what I decided to focus on. Uh, at the time, I, I know that part of my inspiration, like a lot of early critics, was other people doing the same thing. And there wasn't a whole lot of, and I knew that I was never going to, and I had a small time where I figured trying to do like the both big movies in a weekend, like some other people were doing. And I'm like, that's too exhausting. And I mm -hmm. too, I'm not knowledgeable quite enough in film to focus on all of them. So I'm just going to focus on the movies I'm going to watch anyway. Mm -hmm. But I like it sometimes that you include a, like an anime recommendation uh, in in the video that you might be reviewing a Pixar movie or something like that, yeah, that you have also some of the more smaller uh, recommendations too. Right. I've also, I really uh, learned a lot and I've enjoyed uh, being able to research what overseas movies have come mm -hmm. out during a year and put those in my list. It's always my, my favorite kind of comments are usually the ones where I've recommended things that people have never heard of. And then it ends mm -hmm. up being something they really enjoyed. Yeah. I love, I love when you get that opportunity too. That I, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit later with my reviews I'm proud of, but, uh, but Karen, so you do the podcast with Lauren, right? Yeah. And how did mm -hmm. that all happen? How'd you end up working together? Oh man. So it's actually kind of interesting when I was still with the word circuit, they, there was a main podcast and then the, there was just kind of this push of, we needed, we need something where we can talk about other topics, not just the awards season, but, you know, women in film, people of mm -hmm. color, stuff like that. And so there was, there were three of us. Um, I don't know if you know, Kristen Lopez, she was another one. Oh um, yeah. Yeah. We worked together there for a while. And so we kind of did a little trial run with this podcast that didn't really come together the way that, that we all wanted it to. We weren't really satisfied with it. So it just kind mm -hmm. of sat on a shelf. We didn't really do anything with it, but uh, eventually Kristen left award circuit. So did the other girl that was with us and who I've completely lost track of now. I think she's totally out of the industry, but uh, anyway, occasionally the three of us would talk on email or whatever and talk about like, we really need to do a podcast, a female centric podcast, because there weren't a lot of them uh, in film at the time. I mean, this is going back several years ago. And it was like most podcasts that were in and about film were all men or they might have one woman on, but there weren't really, Bechdel cast hadn't started yet. Some of the other ones, mm -hmm. they weren't there. And so we would talk about it here and there, but it just kind of never got off the ground. And then uh, eventually one day, I think Kristen actually had a situation with another podcast where she got really fed up and she just emailed me and she said, we're doing this. And I said, okay, great. I'm ready. And she just kind of put out a call and a couple of other girls that we didn't really know expressed interest. And so we started it with uh, four of us and eventually Kristen left. And then Kim, who was one of our other uh, co-founders, um, she left for other opportunities too. And so now it's just Lauren and I, and we just have a blast. We love doing it. It's so much fun to just really dive into topics that are you know, really focused on female directors, female creators. We uh, talk a lot about editors and producers and other jobs that women have in the industry. And going back like through from the beginning of time, you know, we've done an episode on Alice Gee. We've done, we, you know, we did one on Lois Weber and some of these, you know, founding mothers of film. And it's just been such a 
awesome learning experience for me, getting to really dive into that history and and really seeing how influential women have been um, really since the beginning, but also really getting to to look at where we're at now and ways things have actually gotten worse and ways they've gotten better. And yeah, so it's it's a lot of fun. I love it. That's great. Yeah, we all love Kristen. She's been on on this uh, panel before. Yeah. She's great. She uh, is. So that sounds that sounds really fun. We've had that too with Hallmarkies. It's it, the the hosts. We have a lot because we cover so much content, uh, but uh, it's ebbed and flowed and changed, and people have come and gone, and and uh, and uh, which. I, the 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 main determining factor has, has been me, I guess, through all of it. <laughs> but uh, but it's been fun again, a way for me to meet so many great people, and I'm always amazed that anybody will like give of their time to help me uh, yeah. talk about Hallmark movies. <laughs> well, that's what but, I love about this industry, and it's not just women. Men are men are wonderful and and very mm-hmm. excited and eager to help too. And I love that about about the film community when it's being healthy and mm-hmm. and in kind i think a lot of us are really eager to jump in and help each other Mm -hmm. out partly because we like to hear ourselves talk but (laughs) but also it's just fun to talk about what we love and that's what makes it so great are you a fan of rachel's reviews do you look forward to family movie night female film critics panels or the talking disney podcast if so please consider supporting the podcast by becoming a patreon as a patron you get to access monthly events such as the watch alongs and Q and A's where you get to talk to stars and find out the behind the scenes of the movie making industry. And you can pick what I review for family movie night, or even become a guest on the podcast podcasts and YouTube channels are expensive. And I really, really could use your help. I would so appreciate it. You also get to be a member of the Facebook group where we talk about all the films that we're seeing and we have so much fun. Go to patreon.com slash hallmarkies and select one of the Rachel's fan tiers. That's patreon.com slash hallmarkies. Well, the question I that kind of leads into the question that I want to ask for both of you is why do you think diversity in film criticism matters? There's some people who would say, oh, well, a review is a review. Why does it matter? You know, who's writing or giving the review? Uh, Selspec, what do you think about that? Um, well, it's always the way that your identity and the way that you grew up is always going to affect your worldview and different worldviews is going to affect the way that you interact with art. And in general, we, even amongst, um, and there's so many different perspectives that historically criticism just hasn't paid attention to because they were from demographics that they didn't care. They didn't, they either weren't aiming at um, or they didn't consider financially viable or they just didn't want to know mm-hmm. what they thought um but there's so much there is so much value that i've learned from being able to hear so many different voices in the way that um they've enjoyed movies that i initially thought were trash or how other people didn't like movies that i thought were brilliant everybody's background um and their perspective in the way they were raised affects um their viewpoint and it's it's genuinely helps all of us to understand people in general the more opinions we get to hear when we're actually listening to them and not just being uh sensitive about somebody disagreeing with you because it implicitly makes you think that if this person disagrees with me then one of us has to be wrong but that's not how it works right (laughs) yeah (laughs) what do you think karen about that Oh, I I think that the more the better, you know, like it's interesting because I've seen people get really upset about new opportunities being created for very, you know, diverse voices as if that's taking opportunities away from someone else. But I think the more opinions, I love that Rotten Tomatoes has really expanded and that there's so many people on there now because you know, and I wish that it was easier to disaggregate, you know, opinions and and kind Mm -hmm. of see where different groups lie and things, because I love, you know, if I see a film that's, you know, like an Asian filmmaker or something like that, I want to know what people in the Asian community think about it, because that'll help me not necessarily change my opinion, but it'll help me understand the film better. Some of the things that that we talk about too, like there have been so many films that I love, and then I 
see, oh, a lot of critics don't like this. And then I start looking at, well, who is saying bad things about it? And that tells me a lot about maybe why I differ from what some of my colleagues think. And a lot of it does have to do with different mm -hmm. demographics, culture, that kind of thing. And so I think I, I think diversity is important for a lot of reasons. But I think really what it comes down to, the biggest one, is that it just really helps us see how we can all view the exact same piece of art through very, very different lenses. And that's actually a good thing. It's not a bad thing. Yeah. And I think especially if they're making content for these demographics, there needs to be critics out there saying this is good, this is bad. And not yeah. that every critic's going to think the same thing, like not all women are going to think the same thing, but as somebody I spend my life in in critiquing films that are in general made for women with the Hallmarkies, and they need to be good. There needs to be somebody there saying <laughs> but you're doing a good job or you're not doing a good job. Otherwise, it just gets out of control and it's just these you know, terrible films. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I, so I think it's really important that if we are going to have films made for, you know, for, for an LGBTQ audience, there needs to be LGBTQ critics saying, mm -hmm. nope, that's not good. Uh, and, and so, yeah, I think that especially, and, and we need the voices for everything, but especially I think those like targeted projects. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, and like, you know, I love Catherine Bigelow. I think she's a fantastic director, but I'm so tired of of people coming and saying like, oh, yeah, I love female directed movies. I love Catherine Bigelow. And yeah. it's like, OK, I'm glad you do. She's <laughs> awesome. Have you seen anything by Gina Prince, by the way? Because she's amazing, too. You know, like, mm -hmm. let's expand this, you know. And <laughs> yeah. And I think that's where having those diverse voices and having lots of people seeing and 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 really writing about lots of different types of projects help other directors and, and actors and things that people might not be aware of. It helps us find those, those artists. Mm -hmm. Well, suspects, I'm curious to you, uh, what do you say to people who just won't give something like anime a shot? Um, or do you I try can, to convince them? <laughs> um, I would first say, I get your ambivalence. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, a lot of aspects of anime uh, uh, do get negative reputations, and occasionally there's reasons for that. But the, of course, biggest thing is that about anime is that uh, they don't believe that animation should be limited to one particular genre um, or that mm -hmm. or just children. So they have whatever genre you like. There's an anime for that. Um, so that uh, that um, I don't depending on what people why people don't want to give it a chance whether they don't like the art style because they think that sometimes that uh, that they feel that some of them have gotten too raunchy and I was mm -hmm. like those and uh, I uh, and you know what I get it but at the same time there's literally millions. Um, and if we narrow down what kind of things you're looking for, we could find something that you really like. And I'm glad that a lot more attention. And there's a part of me that is glad that that definite that anime has gotten mainstream and a lot more people are uh, getting into it. But they're also only getting to know the really big stuff. And there's a whole bunch of undercurrent stuff that, admittedly, is kind of hard to find. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think a lot of people when they think, "Oh, I don't like anime," it's they think of Digimon, Pokemon, right. that kind of anime that they've seen on maybe Saturday mornings, they've seen on television, and it's really so much more diverse than that. I mean, everything from like Akira to uh, to uh, Studio Ghibli to to uh, Makoto Shinkai. I mean, there is. I think felt like your name is such a great building block is a first gateway uh into anime um there's just lots of variety that people sailor moon i i i think that there's a lot more than people realize like you're right. saying like and, I, and if i've already gotten like already i'll tell that there are there was a again there was a list recently that i saw it's like anime for people who don't like anime and like one of the, and like one of the top ones that I would recommend to people, there was a recent series called Odd Taxi that mm -hmm. came out, and it is 
brilliant. It is a 12 episode series that's filled with anthropomorphic animals and it visually doesn't look like anime. And you might even think that it's a kid show the first time you see it, but it's actually a murder mystery mm. um, with very kitschy dialogue. It's And it's absolutely brilliant. Another thing I can tell you sometimes with anime is that uh, very is... There's a lot of it that's great, but when it comes to condensed series, because so much anime is basically animators just uh, adapting a manga that's already getting popular, and that's like a hundred chapters in, it's either going to give you only a small taste of that story by only giving you 12 episodes, or they're going to make full hundreds of episodes that will last years, but Mm -hmm. very rarely will have these small condensed series that are satisfying and Odd Taxi is one of those. It's a set story mm. at 12 episodes, and it's great, and it has a satisfying ending, and that is rare. <laughs> that's I haven't rare. heard of that one, so that's, that's exciting. Rare. Yeah, that's it's awesome. a lesser known one. It got really big in the anime community last year. Mm-hmm. It's great. I recommend it a lot. I also think a good gateway is My Hero Academia. I feel like anybody that likes Marvel movies or those, you know, those kind of superhero movies will like that show slash oh, yeah. movies. My Hero is great, has been great, especially for superhero people. Mm-hmm. Um, Especially because yeah. it gives it's that's a nice one because it also give it focuses on superheroes. There's there's a lot of deconstructionist superhero stuff recently. That one is another one that kind of looks at it like a like a job mm-hmm. um, and the way that it affects society. So that's been a yeah. nice turn. Yeah. So, so think, Karen, oh, you sorry. are a big Tom Cruise fan. It seems like I from your letter. Am. <laughs> <laughs> what is it that you especially like about Tom Cruise films? Uh, I mean, watch all of them. They're all amazing. <laughs> Like, he's made 45, 46 movies, and there's probably only two or three that I would say are actively bad movies. He's and, one of um, yeah. Actually, <laughs> I have a soft spot for The Mummy. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, people see, I'm like, I'm like you are with Rock of Ages, because I am a softie for a musical. I, I there are Rock very few musicals that I don't like. <laughs> It's not like great, but I don't know. It's kind of fun. That's the thing. It's not a good movie, but it's not bad because of him. He is definitely not the weak link in that cast. But and that's and that's just it. Like there's only one movie he's ever made where I watch it and I think he did not care about this movie at all. This is not a good performance, and that is Jack Reacher too. But Uh, um, okay, I haven't seen that one. (laughs) But uh, no, I just. It's funny because this love affair started when I was nine years old, which sounds super creepy, I realize. <laughs> um, but he didn't know about it, so it's fine. Um, but yeah, I my dad took me to see Top Gun when I was a kid, and it was just, I you know, it was love at first sight. This is the on-screen persona of Tom Cruise. I'm not talking about who he is in real life. That's fine. But I just, I all of his movies just... He he just has that magnetism, and I'm so happy that people rediscovered it with Top Gun Maverick. It's been really interesting <laughs> to hear people say things that I've been saying for 20 years, and I'm just kind of rediscovering that he's this really dynamic actor who is completely passionate about the experience that viewers are going to have watching his movies. And yeah. And that's why I love him. That's why I think he's such a great movie star. I feel like he's one of sort of the last movie stars. Yeah. That yeah. You, you really, I, mean, I guess The Rock and him is kind of who I think of as like a but movie even, star. Yeah. Like, and part of the reason that I picked Tom Cruise over anybody else is because it's like, and this is no disrespect to Mr. Johnson, but you know it's like you watch his movies and he always has to be like the one with the last laugh he always Mm -hmm. has to be you know he can't be knocked down he can't ever look like he's about to lose like tom cruise all of his movies he's not afraid to look weak he's not afraid to look like he's gonna lose he's not afraid to you know anything and it just really does make it a more a richer experience that's Mm -hmm. why i'm i'm never disappointed with his movies except for jack reacher too Except for Jack Reacher too. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, the um, Night and Day, that's the underrated one. Yes, totally. It's so totally fun. underrated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like such a oh good rom com. Yes, Cameron Diaz. I love her so much, and they are so great together. As long as she's not in Annie, that is a musical <laughs> I did like. <laughs> fair enough. Very fair. <laughs> it was very bad. <laughs> I the uh they 
I couldn't believe that the when the Tomorrow song, I didn't even realize that she had sung it. I'm like, that's like such an iconic song. And it the way they staged it and everything, I didn't even realize I was like, oh, I gotta rewind it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that one was not good. <laughs> oh yeah. But uh, I want to ask both of you, what's the hardest part about being a critic slash YouTuber? What do you think, Suspect? Um, I guess it kind of depends on uh, how you approach of how much, how, I guess some of it has to do with your workflow of like, how much do you have to get done? Mm-hmm. At least for me, because another part of it is video making. A lot of it is just being self-motivated mm-hmm. to, get, to get stuff done. Yeah. Um, has honestly been my biggest thing. Re- recently, the, the the issue I'm running into is that because for a lot of my success has gone specifically from mainstream animation, and I've gotten so bored talking about that. And so I've been trying to uh, branch out to talk about slightly more things other than that. Well, I appreciate that because we... We, I've, I hear about projects and, sh- and uh, shows and movies from YouTubers like yourself, uh, even though I'm pretty in the animation scene uh, many times. Because uh, I, especially anime, I just, there's so many anime projects that it's hard to know which ones are worth your time and which ones aren't. Right. So I appreciate with, that. I know. That's not the stuff, like every once in a while I do the stuff where I try to cover multiple non-movie things that happen in a year sometimes those videos don't get attention and so i also wonder if that's where i should be spending my energy Mm -hmm. even though it's kind of that's the other thing is that do i work on videos that i kind of really want to work on that might not get attention or do i do the stuff that gets attention even if i'm tired of writing (laughs) well i mean you're the Uh, reason that i watched your name I you promoted that. it early on. Oh yeah, and- I got it. I got it in one of the earliest views, and I put it on the 2016 list before it was mm-hmm. even on theaters here. Yeah. So, um, and uh, and then that became my. I, I feel like every year I have sort of my baby that is my the is independent film or smaller film that people don't know about that I really push on people, and that was certainly I I I don't know how many people I got to watch your name. But I loved, I loved the movie. I thought it was so great. One well, of my all time faves. Got some attention. Yes. <laughs> to hear that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what do What do you think, Karen? What's the hardest thing about being a podcaster slash uh, writer critic? Um, you know, honestly, it's it's when I have a dissenting opinion, whether Mm -hmm. it's a movie that I love that everybody hates or vice versa, which is more often I dislike something that a lot of people love. And it's having the confidence in myself and in my opinions to just stand by it and to be willing to not go with the flow just because sometimes that's easier. And honestly, I've got, I've, been subjected to some not kind things as a result of it occasionally but uh Mm -hmm. you know it's it's i feel like when i get um angry comments and responses it actually makes me stronger because i just kind of say no i stand by this and it really helps me like build my arguments and develop them a little bit more not that i'm asking for negative feedback but (laughs) I think it definitely has helped me, you know, get thicker skin, which is probably mm-hmm. a good thing. But but yeah, I think that's the hardest part is is just being confident enough in myself, in my opinion and in my ability to express my opinion um, and to just stand by it. Yeah. Yeah. I was telling a suspect off air that, you know, I had this experience in 2019 where I uh, didn't like Shazam and and the internet pounced on me pretty hard. And I thought that I had thick skin. I'd been blogging for years. I, I uh, had, had been putting, you know, myself out there. I thought that I was pretty strong, but it was, it was hard. It was a definitely a, a, an intense experience. Uh, they, there was actually a mass shooting threat that came in that we had to notify Warner brothers and which just like, Oh my gosh. 
<laughs> wow. But, yeah. But, yeah. And it was the weekend that that happened was when the Dumbo remake came out. And I think oh, I'm yeah. like the only person that's emotionally tied to Dumbo because it was just <laughs> like, like, I know it's not that great of a movie, but I just needed like a comforting kind of movie on that day. And that's the one I got. And so, <laughs> hey, you know, sometimes that's all it takes. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but yeah, for me, I think one of the hardest ones, it was so odd because I didn't even dislike the movie, but it was um, some things that I said about Call Me By Your Name. Mm, I got mm-hmm. attacked. For having yeah. some some issues with uh, you know to do with the content of that movie, and I even acknowledged that it was a good movie, and I there were a lot of mm-hmm. things I liked about it, but I just yeah I got called all kinds of very hateful things because of it. <laughs> the awards circuit can be intense. <laughs> yes, it really yeah. can. a little bit. <laughs> that do is. not say anything negative about Gaga or Kristen Stewart ever, <laughs> ever. <laughs> Yeah, my recent uh, Persuasion review, I learned that, okay, Dakota Johnson fans are intense. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I wanted to like it. I really did. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy, or Hallmarky in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies merch store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Hallmark Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. Better to say nothing. <laughs> yeah. Well, or at least easier. After the Shazam review, I did hold off and not re- I didn't review Joker. I didn't review Birds of Prey because I was just like, it's not even my niche. You know, it's, I cover animation and rom-coms and Christmas movies. So there's no, it's not like I have to do it. And but um, uh, I did review Joker, and I got tons of negative crap for that one. And yeah. you know what? That one actually, I was very entertained by. It. I was a little mad when they started negatively reviewing my podcast just because they didn't like my written review. Mm-hmm. That was stupid. I, but I feel like was Joker was a no-win scenario for all oh, critics. Totally. If you liked it, point, then yeah. totally. <laughs> if you didn't like it, you got it. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's talk about unpopular opinions then. Uh, and I had one recently uh, because I love period pieces. I love Jane Austen. Uh, and so, I mean, it wasn't really an unpopular opinion with persuasion. I was really hoping I would like it. And, and then it disappointed me. But I also didn't like Mr. Malcolm's List uh, that came out. And I, I, I didn't like the book. So I probably shouldn't have expected to like the movie. But I love the cast and it just seems like something I should love Mr. Malcolm's list, but I thought the conflict was so dumb <laughs> and I thought they had no chemistry. I, I don't know. I just didn't enjoy it. And I, that was a bummer for me. I really wanted to like it. Mm. Um, and sometimes, you know, you just got it. You got to be real. And, uh, and uh, luckily there's not the Jane Austen fans or the period <laughs> piece fans are pretty mild, pretty tame. Usually, yeah. And I think that's why I like covering Hallmark movies, too, because they're usually pretty nice. I kind of joke that the worst you'll get from a a Hallmark fan is maybe an angry montage, an angry collage. (laughs) (laughs) I think that's about it. But, um, but Salzburg, what about you? What's an unpopular opinion that you've had, that you had an experience with? Um... I actually had a, uh, I actually, I have, I've definitely had videos where the comments have seemed to be, um, more argumentative than Mm. they tend to usually. I'm, I'm lucky that there's never been anything quite so bad, at least as far as I'm aware of that where I've been excessively targeted and I consider myself to be very lucky in that area. Um, but I actually posted on my community like what are some takes i've had that you just flat out disagree with 
Mm -hmm. And like the most, the two biggest things that I thought way more people, because historically it has been people complaining about me not loving, um, uh, Drac, uh, Adam Sandler's Dracula from the Hotel Transylvania series. Oh, um, yeah. Where I'm just not, I'm not, as a dad character specifically, not particularly as a comic character because I do think he's funny. I just, I have a thing with those kinds of overproductive dad characters and I just can't. And, and, it, and um, but when I looked at the reception to that prompt, uh, the majority of stuff that came back was that uh, on my 2010 list that Megamind was too low. <laughs> And that I was way too nice to wreck it, Ralph. Too. Oh, they're <laughs> pulling back, back. 2010. Wow. Right. That's <laughs> funny. Well, I'm honestly like I've, the older videos prior to 2013. I've been re-releasing those lists because the the ones prior to that were like re- really old and really badly done. So I've been re-releasing mm. them. I re-released okay. the 2010 list last year. Okay. Um, so it was yeah. more recent and a lot of people were like were re- <laughs> and a lot of people got for some reason got really fixated on Megamind. I mean, um, you weren't I think that high in Raya. Did the Disney people come after you? Not particularly. My Raya review was pretty neutral. Mm-hmm. Um I was trying to I that was I forget how long it took me to get a review out for that. It had to it was at least 3 weeks. And so for that one, I was definitely, I was, I did get very on, like a lot of people did, partic- its ending message, which I thought was uh, complicated and not yeah, particularly was... well done, but a lot of people felt that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, Raya, Raya's, a lot of the mess around Raya largely came from uh, fixating on people who called it an Avatar ripoff. Oh, and right. I did yeah. make a video at some point addressing addressing that in at least some capacity. And mm-hmm. in the meantime, I tried to both give it a to do while also being honest about how I felt about how it worked. Mm-hmm. So that video honestly didn't get that controversy for me, mm-hmm. particularly. I've gotten harsher, way harsher on things like for whatever reason, me liking Incredibles 2 was also probably one that more people disagreed with. Where I, was both, where I got both people who thought I was too nice in the movie in general, but also too hard on Mr. Incredible just doing the reverse career house dad bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Because, yeah, the Pixar fans, I wasn't a big fan of Turning Red. Uh, that was an unpopular opinion I had this year. Oh, okay. I just didn't love the metaphor. I didn't think it worked very well. I thought it was kind of clunky. And I... I don't know. I just thought the mom was over the top and too much. I didn't, I didn't love it, but uh, the Pixar fans can be intense. <laughs> they really I can. like turning red, but yeah. Uh, but uh, Karen, what about you? What's the unpopular opinion that you've had? Oh man. I have many of them <laughs> apparently, but one recently that, uh, that I'm still kind of scratching my head over was actually the last duel. Oh, Which, yeah. I saw that yeah. in your letterbox. Yeah. Um, it was really interesting because I hated that movie. In fact, I wanted to leave while I was watching it, but I was just like, no, I am a professional. I'm not like certain other people who review movies without finishing them. So, uh, yes, I'm, just, I'm going <laughs> I know who you're to talking see- about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was like, I'm just I'm I'm going to see it through, even though this feels like torture. And It was very interesting because the feedback that I got was from a lot of people and a lot of the conversations that I ended up finding myself in, especially on Twitter, which can be amazing and awful, uh, sometimes at the same time and about the same thing. So weird. But um, but yeah, it, it so much of what people took issue with was not even disagreeing about what the movie is. It was just like they just didn't have a problem with certain things that I had a big problem with, like showing the attack multiple times. And, and it was just like, why are you upset at me for not wanting to watch that happen, especially more than once, but at all, you know, it's just, I think that was what was so surprising Mm -hmm. was that people took issue with, with, not what I was necessarily saying about the quality of the movie, but just about certain things that I just didn't personally feel comfortable watching. 
Yeah, no, I agree. I, I had the same feeling about the movie. Uh, so uh, let's talk about a review that we're proud of, that we are content that we created that we're proud of. Uh, I, every year, like I said, I kind of have my baby movie that I love. That's a smaller film that I really try to push on people and get people to see it. Um, I've had a lot this year, actually. I feel, I feel like this year has been a good year for movies in general. Yeah. Uh, but I loved a little movie called Hit the Road that's an Iranian film. Uh, and uh, it's about these, this family that's uh, escaping into Turkey, I think it is. Anyway, and... It showed a side of Iran that I have never seen before with the, it, I, the only movies I've ever seen in Iran have been in the city. So this showed the countryside and this family felt so real and genuine and it, the movie can be actually be quite hilarious, but it's also tense. I just thought it was a masterpiece. Um, I also just recently loved Marcel the shell with shoes on. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> it's I almost gave it a perfect score in my review. I thought it was charming and sweet and warm hearted and I just absolutely loved it. I also loved Apollo 10 and a half space age childhood this year. I thought it's uh, the best animated film that Richard Linklater's ever made. I, it was so nostalgic for me, even though I didn't grow up then just the it made you think about your own memories from uh, that were similar to his memories, but mine, it would be in the eighties and his, was the in the the characters was in the 60s i loved that i loved phantom of the open uh which is just another charming underdog sports movie about the worst golfer ever the british (laughs) open it was so good and then i also loved an anime called popel of chimney town i thought it was absolutely gorgeous and a a really good story and uh just uh something that flew under the radar so those those sort of smaller films uh those reviews when i can get them out there and and hopefully expose a few of my friends to these films it it, it's so satisfying so that's what i thought of for this month but uh what about you karen what's um a uh something you're proud of a review oh man i feel like this year i have just kind of I don't know what's happened. I have been watching a lot of movies, but I feel like I haven't done as much work as I do in years past, but I'm probably the one that I'm the most proud of right now is um, just to bring it back to Tom Cruise. It's what I wrote about Top Gun Maverick and um, also what I said about it on my other podcast. I just, I was so in love with, everything about it not just you know not just tom cruise or his performance or whatever but the way he brings this cast together and just i was in Hall H at comic-con which is going on right now um when they revealed the first trailer and i was immediately drawn in by the cinematography i'd always been a little skeptical of this movie not just that it would ever see the light of day but even that it would possibly be you know anywhere decent and when i saw that cinematography i just immediately was like this is going to be something really really special and it was and obviously everybody's seen it it's like the high one of the highest grossing movies of the year highest grossing movie of tom cruise's career but deservedly so because it's really an incredible experience and such a gift that we got to see on screen so that was definitely a big one for me yeah i've seen Um, it three times yeah me too yeah (laughs) including at the drive-in which was nice uh, it's like a perfect drive-in movie oh how fun you you want to go to the drive-in and see a movie that is not like super dialogue heavy Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, and so it's just like the part i think the perfect choice and and the drive-in in here in in uh, salt lake is pretty close to the airport So it's like a a really good place to see the movie. Nice. Yeah. I used to live in in Utah, actually. I went to the Weber State. Oh, really? um, Yeah. And so we used to go to the drive-in in Riverdale all the time. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's so cool. I didn't know that. Fun Uh, facts about me. (laughs) (laughs) So, so Selswick, what about you? What's a review or something you made that you're really proud of? Uh, It's hard to say 
certainly I don't know about recently. I feel like this year I've been a little sluggish. I've been going through um, some stuff that's made it harder for me to work. Um, and sometimes I may feel bad the way that it affects how I work. Um, but I think everyone's got that thing where they feel they have moments where they feel like, oh, I'm so terrible at what I do. I'm so ashamed. This is the worst thing I've ever made. And then you go back and but if, when you can, you go back, you look at your old stuff and go, oh, this is actually OK. I'm mm -hmm. I'm adequate. Um, and I think just one thing that I'm really I guess one video th that I made last year that I was really happy that got a positive return was when I reviewed Soul um, because mm. I really went into because in that case I didn't do a traditional review I had extended thoughts about the topic they covered and particularly the way that people received it and so I just went into this completely tangent diatribe that was different from necessarily uh, reviewing the film and that video got a lot of positive response um, from what I talked about and I was really pleased to see yeah. um, that it that it made a that it it struck a note with people and I was very proud of that. So yeah. every once, once in a while, it's been nice when I do something off that I don't usually do and it just works. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I remember I'm that. always happy I'm, when that happens. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Well, thank you so much to both of you for coming on and uh, talking, uh, talking about your experiences. I really appreciate it. It's been great. Great to get to know you both better. And uh, why don't you both share how people can find your content? Uh, what, what about you, Karen? The easiest way to find me is on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. I'm at Karen M. Peterson, and I try to do a good job of linking my work there. I'm not mm -hmm. always successful, but mm -hmm. you can find my link tree, which does have my, you know, in my bio, and it does have links to my work at Variety, at um, Citizen Dame, and different places. So, yeah. Great. What about you, Suspect? Well, I am on YouTube, so... <laughs> I'm fairly Googleable. <laughs> just type in my name pretty much anywhere. S, uh, no, sorry, C E L L S P E X, and I will show up in some way. Yeah. Um, and how did you come up with your name? Um, I was just curious. Your, it was just because animation sells. Partially, no. I, I rem God. It actually, it. I don't forget how it evolved. At one point. My original name was Celluloid Seamstress. Oh, and then I just realized that that was way too long and semi-pretentious. <laughs> and at some point, I, sh I shortened it. I know that at one point, I was just trying to make the, the name smaller. And so I and so at one point, it shortened to Cell Seam. And then at some point, I thought of Celluloid Speculations. And so that shortened to Cell Specs. Very cool. Very cool. Well, you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So check that out. Also, make sure you check out the Homeworkies podcast. Lots of fun stuff going on over there. And you can find my writing as well at Rotoscopers, uh, the animation website. So take a look at that. And uh, thanks again to both of you. I really appreciate it. And uh, hopefully uh, we can have you on again one of these days. <laughs> so thanks so much. much. Thank you. This has been so much fun. Yeah. Yes, Bye, thank you so much for having me. Yes. Bye, everyone. <laughs>